I refer to an article in Der Spiegel from 1977 called Cancer, Disease of the Soul, wherein it stated the international psychosomatics found people become ill when they can't resolve trauma. But why is one affected in the mind, but in another the belly, another the heart, and another the bones? They couldn't work it out. They examined all the material parameters, but nothing correlated. In the meantime, they partly dissolved. Something else they discovered was that there are cases all over the world of people with a diagnosis that they should never have survived, and situations where everyone said, no way, they will die, but who completely healed, and they concluded that no doctor should ever give anyone a death sentence, because it's another trauma which can't be resolved. For the first time in 2,500 years, this man rediscovered the lost body-soul biology, and he is actually the first in 2,500 years to take the evil completely out of medicine and no longer calls disease illnesses, but instead meaningful biological special programs. He rediscovered the body-soul biology from the scientific foundation built by Plato, whose teacher was Socrates. I would like to come back to this book by Seamus O. Mahoney called Can Medicine Be Cured? No, medicine is broken. Only a war or humanitarian disaster can reset it. Five times he makes a statement of faith like, the vaccinations helped, the antibiotics helped. But on page 262, he comes to the astonishing conclusion that there are, after all, two different medical systems. One, where the symptoms are suppressed with medicines so that we can quickly return to work, Plato and one that is named after Panacea, the daughter of Asclepius. And there I found the most beautiful definition of health I've ever heard. Health is harmony within myself with my surroundings. And O'Mahony writes, this second medical system never stood a chance. So this knowledge was there and he rediscovered it. How did he do that? His son died. He developed testicular cancer and asked the other patients with the same diagnosis if they had also lost a child. Then they cried and asked him how he knew that and said, yes, it happened to me too. Next, he goes to Siemens and gets a brain tomography, records the brain in layers and finds everyone with this cancer diagnosis has a signal in the same place in the brain. The same with women who had breast cancer. Exactly the same. This was the case with all so-called cancers. He also finds it with the skin. The same everything. And with computer tomography, he linked every part of the body to a correlating part of the brain and made tables to work from. Shown here with the germ layers that we know come from embryology. He shows where each trauma or biological conflict will affect tissue changes, how it builds up to be able to cope in a given situation, to improve digestion, or is broken down, as in the bones, to improve mobility. He calls them meaningful biological special programs. So, then when I look at his table and all the biological conflicts, a trauma is now turned into a positive thing, into a function that the skin has when we need it for defense or to hold tight. The function organs have, or the tissues that we can't see. I can look up their function, and there is a construction plan of the human being. Dr. Hamer found it. Namely, the proof that every part of the body is a materialized unit of consciousness with its own function. We see evidence for this in how a word can cause not only cardiac arrest, but also affect the skin. You can see it. It can affect my self-worth, which leads to bone decomposition. Dr. Hamer has proven that we materialize consciousness. He brought the spirit back into science and put it on a scientific foundation 
because when someone has a symptom, I can tell you where you'll see a signal in the brain. Or if I look at the brain, I can tell what's going on in the body. Then I had the good fortune to become friends with the great biochemist, Erwin Shargaff, who was my advisor and teacher. After our first fight, when I still thought they were cheating, he told me, Stefan, if you ever find something or even stumble upon something and you think it's right, I'll give you two tips. If it matches the preferred stance or the mythology, then it is not proof that it is correct, but it is a hint that it might be correct and important. And look, I suddenly noticed the colors of the germ layers are the four colors of the Vedic philosophy. The Golden Age the silver, the copper, and the iron. Here, the digestion or ectoderm like a bowl or a symbol for the upside-down omega. Simple. When lightning strikes, then more digestion helps me. When the sun shines again, trauma solved, reversed. It works the same with the pericardium heart sac, the skin, etc. Here, the plus sign means to reinforce or fortify, to better protect. In bacteria, we call that gram positivity. A Hungarian, correction, it was actually a Danish bacteriologist named Dr. Hans Christian Gram, named it when he discovered that bacteria form thicker membranes when they encounter acid or heat to protect themselves. And we say those gram-positive bacteria are the very dangerous ones because they protect themselves from antibiotics with thicker membranes. These are life principles that fit with everything living. Here, gold, full reduction force, digestion, is right in life's energy flow. Little pain in the healing phase, little fever. Here, a bit more pain further from the energy flow. Here, even further away, bone, tendon, muscles, they dissolve in a trauma. You are worth nothing. Unexpected bad news letter. You're fired. You're worthless or bullied and you can't stand it. The hip ulcerates and then builds up again in the healing phase. The same principles apply for contact. All the sensory organs, the outer skin, the lining of the vessels, checking you have enough oxygen, energy, heat, etc. And when the lightning strikes here, then the tissue breaks down to a thinner skin. And when I have contact again, like a child enrolls in school and feels ripped away from its mother, father, and siblings, and the skin is too thin, so straight away it builds it up again. And that is what we call measles. So what we call diseases are actually meaningful biological special programs, and there are always two phases to each program. The degradation or deterioration phase we call one disease, and the resulting building up or repairing phase we call another disease. But in reality, they go together. And here we have a lady with an ulcerated right hip. She was bullied in the workplace. When she leaves, the bone builds back up again and there is pain. She is advised to leave that job because otherwise the hip could completely collapse. People store their renal kidney water when they suffer a trauma of being abandoned or are on the run or their existence is threatened. The kidney saves water, which is quite intense when everything is swollen and no drops come out. Those are the people who need dialysis. But then we have another challenge, because if the kidney retains water, we have a metabolic backlog and every symptom, things we wouldn't normally feel at all, become bigger and stronger, turning a mouse into an elephant. This is what it looks like when the trauma is resolved. Suddenly the black ring disappears and turns white from the outside in disproving again the metastasis theory that one disease spreads to other body parts as that would go white from the inside out, not outside in. But when doctors see that on the brain or anywhere else on an organ, they say the cancer is spreading, that disease poison is there. I'd advise you to learn this knowledge before you get a diagnosis like this. 
I have never seen anyone survive a second diagnosis. A first diagnosis, okay, then we can tweak the diet and work out what we did wrong. Too much smoking, or that's wrong, or what do I know? But a second diagnosis? That floors most people and makes them depressed. They have no more drive, nothing, and they cave. Meanwhile, it's quite easy to have a scan analyzed by a suitable therapist who will tell you what it's all about. Dr. Hamer found out that in the areas of female sexuality, pictured here on the biggest red ring as principal contact, here is the male one. If we see activity here for over nine months, then we can die of a heart attack in the healing phase. It slows the pulse down, but people can be easily saved via a shock. Papa, you can't die! Or you can put chili powder in their mouth. In the Black Forest, a 93-year-old man was in his coffin, luckily not screwed down yet, and he comes to and finds he's in a shroud. The morticians who washed them respectfully had put another layer over to cover him. Anyway, he climbs out of the sack, looks and sees he is naked, and the ten men standing around cleaning, plus the coffin bearers, jumped out of their skin. He was apparently dead. Brain death was diagnosed. In a healing crisis, the brain also switches down a gear. Well, you can't have a current because that's for oxygen metabolism, so you are considered or diagnosed brain dead and taken away. And here there is much to say because activities in these four brain areas control our social behavior, whether we are manic or depressive, whether we are autistic or bioaggressive. You can see it all. Dr. Hamer called these double activities antenna because they give us extra powers to see clearer, to sense things that you wouldn't normally have sensed. I always remember that in many cultures, so-called handicapped people are considered holy and asked what's going on. I also remember that some autistic people are able to perceive things in a flash. This knowledge shows that we spiritually change when a trauma happens that is beyond our control. We lose awareness of our actions when something is too alien or life-threatening. Furthermore, this knowledge is so important that I'm sure it could be the foundation for peacemaking capabilities in humanity. To know how I function myself, why I sometimes go crazy, what gives, what's wrong, etc. Because if we do not even understand ourselves, then we cannot judge others. And that is one of the good messages that I now happily, gladly bring you. Because this knowledge frees us from fear that can very quickly become dangerous and deadly.